Over the years, our family's had a share of health problems. So prescriptions are a part of our life. Before we went to the big box store. We both thought it would help us save. But with the long lines and impersonal service, filling prescriptions became a chore. That's when a friend recommended DNH. Now Tristan knows our prescriptions. Brenda always helps us find the right vitamins. And after Dad's fall, Monica's been a real expert with all our home medical needs, all without the lines. Trust and service. That's our DNH. Good morning and welcome to Radio Friends on this Wednesday, January the 18th. We've got a very special guest with us today. She's written a book. Uh, the book is called Swimming Against the Tide. Her name is Nan Unglesvay. Welcome to Radio Friends, Thank Nan. Thank you. Thank you. You are a delightful lady and you are an inspiration. I and so. I, I'm so glad that you came today because I want you to, in, in the eight minutes that we have here, okay. mm -hmm. I want you to share as much of your story as you can with our, with our listeners. Okay. You had a stroke mm -hmm. back in, 19, uh, 2000, in 2003. Uh -huh. 2003. Mm -hmm. You were swimming alone when you had the stroke. Right. What happened? I was swimming alone in a heated pool and it was 15 feet from my house, and I don't know how I got out of the water. Apparently I got out of the water and I pulled down the cover. What I do remember is I, we've got a zipper because it's, it's cool, it's February, so it's cold in Missouri, and there's a zipper over a pool. I do remember tipping, pushing up the zipper. I do remember that because it was icy outside, did not want to fall. I do remember that. From then on, I have no memory what happened. My husband came home, found me in bed, talking like a goofy fruitcake. <laughs> when you had this stroke, mm -hmm. obviously you, he took you to the to the hospital. Then. Right. Uh -huh. The doctors told you mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. when you came to again right. that mm -hmm. you would never be able to walk. That's Is right. that right? That's right. Mm -hmm. And what was the first thing that went through your head? First of all, I didn't believe him. I and that's important, isn't it? Absolutely. <laughs> that's important. Very... She, I would say she walked in here herself today. <laughs> I'm very stubborn. Okay. <laughs> yeah, right. And, and you've I, got a good attitude. And I said, and help me, and I'll be fine. I'll do whatever you say. And that's what I did. So you said, when the doctor said, you're never going to walk again because of your stroke, uh -huh. you said, well, I respectfully disagree with you. That's right. Uh, mm -hmm. But I am going to walk again. That's right. What did uh -huh. they say to you? They said, well, we'll help you. Okay, but and they didn't believe it, did they? No, they did not. They did not. So why do you think you were able to prove them wrong? Because, first of all, I did everything that they told me to do, which I, for the rest of my life you have to do. You have to follow what all of physical therapists say. You have to say what the occupational therapists say, speech therapists say. You have to follow what they say, and you have to follow what they say. You have to have a good neurologist. And, um, you have to have the right attitude, too. You have to have the right attitude. Yes, <laughs> right. right, right. And I'm a Norwegian, and I don't cry. Well, when I was in the hospital, they had a, a game they made me play. And at that time, I was the youngest person that was there. And I went down, and I had to play horseshoes. Well, I don't play horseshoes. And I was in a wheelchair, and I was throwing horseshoes. Well, I thought that was the silliest thing to do. <laughs> and, and I started, and I went back, to, I was crying. I never cry at all. I went back to my husband, and I was crying. He said, look, do something about it. So he said, well, yeah, do something. So the next day, I went to the neurologist, and I said, you're not treating me hard enough. I said, you know, I want to be treated harder. And so he wrote something on his chart, and they said, every time they came to see me, I can't believe this, but just I'm supposed to treat you harder. And so they made me walk faster. They made me walk. They made my speech and everything. They did a lot of, lot of stuff for me. Which so they had you done told before. them, oh, you yeah. told oh. them, I want you to push me harder. I did. I did. I did. And the, the, after I left the hospital, after a month, when I was walking, the physio... You the, were walking within a month? Yes. Uh-huh. And the, and the social worker said, if you had not gone to that neurologist, you, you, you wouldn't be walking today. You wouldn't, we, they wouldn't you be know, as good as you are today. Mm. So mm. that's, you, and you have to take control of yourself. You have to agree with what they're doing, but you have to take control of yourself. And right. a lot of people are afraid to do that. Exactly. They're afraid to do it because they think, and this is not saying that the doctors don't oh, know oh, what oh, they're doing. No, they did. Oh, but. Yeah. And, and sometimes I think in, in physical therapy, they will err on the side of safety as, oh, to, yeah. not, oh, yeah. as to not push you too hard, oh, yes. yeah. not, not wanting to take uh -huh. any chance. That's right. Uh -huh. I know that with my mother. Uh -huh. uh, 
I would push my mother a lot harder okay, right. to get her to do things and walk and stay active right. than the doctors would. Sure. Right. Uh, yeah. And that's what you were doing with yourself. That's right. Yeah. You decided to write a book. Right. Yes, and this I did. This is a book of inspiration, isn't it? I, it it's a fun book. Yeah. It, you, 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 it's a fun book. I mean, it, you have to be we have to be persistent in what you're doing, but you have to have fun with it. Yeah. So the book is called that. Swimming Against the Tide. You got against is upside down. Like, on purpose. On, on purpose. purpose. On purpose. On purpose. Okay. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, she, the lady knows what she's doing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not questioning you. <laughs> and I think, uh, and I think the, the 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 happy attitude that you have uh -huh. makes a big difference too. It does. It does. I know that. So, somebody listening today who may be going through what you went through, okay. and and it looks pretty bleak. Right. What do you say to them? What do you say to them? Well, first of all, selfishly, I'll tell them to buy my book. Because, buy your book. Buy my book. Okay, where can you buy your book? That's number one. Barnes and Noble or Amazon.com. Okay. And I've got a website. And uh, yeah, that. Well, what's your website? It's swimmingagainstthetide.net. Swimmingagainstthetide.net. Dot net. Dot net. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. So that's the first thing you're going to tell them. Yeah. Is right. buy this book. Right. Uh -huh. And if they can't go out and buy it themselves. Have get, somebody else buy it. Buy them, buy it. Now, a lot of some people that I've talked to uh, haven't been able to read before they read my book, but now they can read because it's written in big type. It's by the American Blind Association. We've got permission to use their type size, so it's big, big set for them. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. Okay, so that's your first. What do you then next six. after they've read your book? What do you right. say? Well, first of all, you have to be very persistent. Um, whatever the neurologist and everything they told you to do, you have to do. But you have and to maybe take, even a little bit more than what they tell you to do? More, more than what you could tell to do, yes. Like, it'd be neat if, for example, I don't have a, never had a good sense of balance. But it'd be neat for them to know ahead of time I didn't have a good sense of balance. But you can't do that before you have a stroke. They don't test you before you have a stroke. Right. And it'd be neat to know if you'd have ahead of time. But you yeah. don't know. Right. So. Yeah. Well, you are you are living proof that miracles do happen. happen. Mm -hmm. Do you attribute it also to a miracle? Uh... When I got out of this water and I was alive, if something did come to me, I should do something. And writing this book is something I did. So you had, you had um, an inspiration when you got out of the water before you were even healed that you should write a book. Yeah, I did. I did because I was alive. Yeah, I would say that was a miracle. <laughs> so and, and you were you were spared. You were supposed to be alive so you could help other people. That's right. And keep laughing. <laughs> That's right. That's and, right. Man, That's you're right. a great lady. I'm, okay. So, okay, I'm good. so glad that I've <laughs> met you. Good. And you were you. a professor at the university yes, also. I was. Well, once a professor, yes. always a professor, professor right? Yes. So okay. you can get the book at Barnes and Noble That's or right. okay. Or okay. www.swimmingagainstthetide.net yeah. and, and, and Amazon.com. And Amazon.com. Oh, you're on all the big time stuff. Of course, yeah. yeah. Right. Okay. Our show directed <laughs> by Travis McMillan of the Reynolds Journalism Institute. This lady knows what she's doing. Audio is Pat Aker at KBIA. Our floor director is Will Claggett. And our assistant producer and guest coordinator, Uncle James Mauser. Thank you for listening. And uh, go to kbia.org. Sign up for a free podcast or a vodcast. Bye bye.